it's actually variable, but I tend to fly about 30 to 40 flights per annum with British Airways. I have no set pattern because my clients are based all over the world, but I tend to go to New York most frequently, uh, followed by Hong Kong, Bangkok, Nice. happen to have a house there, so that does help a little bit. So it's a mix of mostly business, but a little bit of leisure as well. Well, being based in London, it certainly helps to be able to fly BA because they're flying the routes that I need to go with the frequency um, that's needed, uh, particularly when business demands. But also for me, it's, it's a feeling of home. Uh, you may hear the accent, I'm not necessarily British, but I choose to live here and have lived here for a long time, so British Airways is an extension of home for me. Ooh, um, I fly a lot. It's uh, about almost 1.4 million miles in the last um, 10 years, so that's roughly the equivalent of about 2,800 hours in the air, so it's an awful long time. And when you include waiting at the start and the end of a journey, it makes, it makes for a very long, uh, uh, large amount of time. Well, a lounge forms just a whole part of the journey, and you know, you buy an airline ticket, many people think it's just the flight but you actually have to think of your journey starting at home and ending up at your final destination. When you have to, for various security and safety reasons, check in well in advance, um, the lounge provides you know, an optimum place of comfort and um, relaxation, a chance to do some work, a chance to maybe have a little refreshment. We've all been caught up in that rush to get to the airport and that fear of, oh, we're gonna miss our flight. But once you're there in good time and you can go into a lounge, you can finally relax. So something like Galleries Club at T Terminal 5, or indeed now Terminal 3, gives you a very comfortable, um, actually somewhat luxurious space to relax in, have a little bit of food and beverage, have an opportunity to work, and just compose yourself before you're getting on what could be a very long journey. In any lounge you're going into, um, you have to think of it as going into somebody's home. Um, I have a lot of guests that come to visit me, obviously saving on their hotel bills. Um, I like to extend good hospitality. So the first thing I look at, regardless of where you are, is having um, a good level of uh, a warm welcome, um, a can-do attitude from staff. Um, you want a friendly environment, you want a clean environment, because after all, we wouldn't want to go and sit somewhere that's dirty. Um, it would make you feel uncomfortable and unwelcome. So that welcome is very, very important in, in any lounge, particularly in something like the club lounge, which is very busy. I think it's amongst the busiest of all the lounges on the BA Root Network. Um, you know, those, those elements need to be there consistently from m morning opening until last flight out at night. Yes, I very much enjoy my food um, and my wine, and uh, it's, it's a good part of life, I find, being very sociable, um, sitting around a table with, with friends and with colleagues. It's, it's a terrific experience, so I, I actually seek out good food no matter where I am. Absolutely. It has to be a premium experience, particularly in Concord Room. When you have very wealthy customers um, who are traveling a great deal, you know, a lot of them have chefs in their own homes. So they are used to exceedingly high standards, you know, from breakfast through to midnight snacks in their own homes, let alone going out. And that's why they're spending the money they are to travel in first class. Um, it's part of the experience. And if it doesn't meet up to their expectations, they will be disappointed. And it's the airline that suffers at the end because they will take their business elsewhere. I expect actually top, top levels of service all the time. Um, and it has to be a true restaurant experience. You cannot have plates plunked down at you. You have to have wine bottles brought to you and shown what you're getting. Um, last year, actually, I was flying out in first to India. Um, I asked for a glass of Merceau, which happened to be uh, available. Um, what was delivered was not Merceau, and I said, this is not Merceau. And she said, yes, we've run out, but I didn't think you'd notice. Um, you know, again, if that sort of a story happened in a fine dining establishment, you would probably get up and walk out. Um, you're a little bit, uh, um, you know, not quite able to do that uh, at Terminal 5 or, you know, or having pre-flight dining in Terminal 3, but that is a service standard that should never, ever happen. Um, so I expect things like bottles to be shown to me to be poured properly in proper glasses. They exist. Um, I expect to be... Um, you know, attentively looked after without being 
overbearing or intruding. Um, I've noticed sitting in the Concord uh, dining area, staff actually don't pass by your tables very often. So if you have a slight request or if something is wrong, sometimes you have to get up and go and seek out the staff, which again is not a fine dining experience. In the first lounge, you have menus all over the tables where you can order certain things. And quite often you order and it never materializes. You never see the staff member again. You order boiled egg and toasted soldiers, or you order the lovely Neal's Yard cheese plate. All of these are spectacular when and if you get them, but it's hit or miss as to whether you're going to get it. Sometimes it's a letdown, which is a shame, because you know when it's good, it can be very good. I flew to Seattle the other day, and I had a lady looking after me on the terrace, and she was exceptional. Everything was done absolutely beautifully. She had uh, a proactive response in that she came back and said, would you care for another pot of tea? Would you like a top up of champagne? Um, we didn't have to go and seek her out for anything. She, she just almost intuitively knew that we were you know, ready for a little bit more, and that was terrific. Um, so when that happens, great, but it's actually not happening often enough. The physical space of the lounge is terrific, and the design of the lounge I rather like. It's just that level of service can sometimes let uh, British Airways down. When you fly on uh, Singapore Airlines, for example, out of Singapore, even Qantas out of Sydney, and just, just to compare like for like in terms of home airports and home lounges, they by far exceed uh, the standard of service that you receive in the BA lounge. Again, Cafe Pacific in, uh, in Hong Kong and Japan Airlines in Tokyo. You know, what's interesting is three out of those four airlines I've just mentioned are actually partners in the One World Alliance with British Airways. So there is a very high um, ethos of service standards, but that needs to actually make it to British Airways, and we need to make sure that this happens, um, in, in particularly the Concorde and First Lounges at, uh, at Heathrow. I had a very um, wise pair of grandparents. My granny even wore white gloves, different era. Um, but they worked very hard all of their lives. And my grandfather used to always say to me, whatever you do, don't give 100%, don't give 110%, give 150%. All right? I think of that every day when I get up. What am I doing today? I need to give 150%. And you know, I think that's a good message for anybody in business, is to give 150%. My father is actually a professional musician, and he's obviously very conscious of when you go out on stage, you are on stage and you are performing. You have to look at restaurant service as the same way. When you are in a uniform and you are front of house, right, i.e. not in the kitchen and behind the scenes, you're on stage and this is your performance. So therefore, you need to be wide awake, you need to be pleasant, smiley, uh, receptive, welcoming. You need to provide great service. Great service is a really good thing. In Germany, in France, they are serious professions that are well paid and well respected. It's not a bad profession to be in. That ability to mix and mingle with customers is terrific, but you have to have a good personality for it. If you're not happy in that job, don't be afraid to say, I really don't like this job and go and find something else that you're maybe perhaps better suited to.